Let's take a look at a real world example where we're given a cost function, C of Q, where Q is the number of units of the good that's uh, being produced. So I think when we get started on these, it's important to note exactly what the variables mean. So in this case, Q is our quantity or number of units, where C of Q is going to be the cost. So in part A, what we're going to do is figure out what is the total cost of producing 6,900 units. So in this case, 6,900, that's a value for Q. And we want to find the cost, so what we'll do is go ahead and plug 6,900 in for each of our Qs in the function. So it's the cost for 6,900 units is going to be given by 5.3 multiplied by, instead of Q, it's going to be 6,900 plus 40,000. Now I went ahead and got my calculator out to help me out. I got this to be 76,570. And when we think about what our units are going to be, C of Q was the cost in dollars, so we can go ahead and label this as dollars. In part B, we want to know how many units can be produced for a total of $77,630. Again, we want to basically say, that is a total cost in dollars, so that's a value for C of Q is going to be 77,630. And we're going to replace that into the left hand side of our function. It's going to replace the C of Q there. And so it's going to be 77,630 equals 5.3 Q plus 40,000. So Basically, we're going to get rid of the left-hand side here where we had C of Q and do a little bit of work to isolate Q on one side all by itself. So this is a linear equation. We want to get the 5.3 Q on one side by itself first. So all of our variables are on one side. All of our constants are on the other side. So I want to move the 40,000 over. We'll use subtraction in this case to move it over. So if we do it to the left-hand side, we also want to do it to the right-hand side. So subtracting 40 thousand from each side will give us 37,630 on the left hand side and we'll be left with 5.3 Q on the right hand side as the 40,000s get to cancel out. What remains is to get rid of that 5.3 that's in front of the Q. Well it's attached with multiplication so we want to divide both sides to counteract that by 5.3. On the right hand side that'll make a 1 out in front of our Q and we'll have Q, our quantity is going to be, again, get the calculator out, 7,100. When we think about what, what kind of uh, label this should have, it's not in dollars because Q is our quantity. It's going to be the number of units. All right, so 7,100 units can be produced for $77,630. The very last thing we want to answer on this is what's the cost of the 6,901st item? So the value for that next item is sometimes referred to as marginal, in this case cost, the cost for the next item. So what I'm going to do to calculate this is I'm going to go ahead and calculate what is that cost for the 6,901st item and we'll get that by going ahead and plugging that's a value for Q or number of items. We're going to replace it in to the original function for our Q. So 5.3 times 6,901 plus 40,000. So in our case, calculator says that's 76,575.3. Again, units are going to be in dollars. So that's the, the total cost for producing 6,901 items. Well, if we go ahead and subtract away the cost for producing 6,900 items, which we calculated in part A, so minus 7, 000, or 76,570, our total here at the bottom, the difference is going to be 5.3. So let's try to make sense of that 5.3. That, that 6,901st item costs $5.3. But there's an easier way to actually do this instead of 
actually plugging in 6,901 and subtracting away 6,900 away from it um, when we plug that into the cost function. Um, because when we think about our original function, our original function looking back up here was C of Q equals 5.3 Q plus 40,000. That function, when we think about it, is linear. So it's going to increase by the exact same amount each time we increase Q. We can think of this as being like Y equals MX plus B. Basically, if we kind of change around our variables, go back to when we think about linear, meaning line. So in this case, whatever that M is, that's the constant rate of change. We can kind of line that up and say, well, that's 5.3 in this case, the coefficient attached to our variable over on the right hand side and whatever that slope is is going to be the same thing as our marginal cost or the amount it increases by every time we increment up by one unit whatever Q is in our case so in our case that marginal cost can come out to be just 5.3 so we didn't actually have to do quite as much work as what I did initially, but that's just kind of motivating where this comes from. So I hope this helps out as you're working through these problems and trying to understand cost, marginal cost, and um, plugging into the correct variable. I hope this helps. Good luck.